In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the model guidance as we've been doing over the past few days. There is a couple of more things we need to take a look at that were not apparent as of yesterday and the day before even. So we're going to be going over all of these things. I'm so excited to get into it with you guys. As you can see, there is some showery activity happening here along the west, all the way from the northwest down to the southwest here in Southern California. It's as you work your way inland that it's a little bit more exclusive here for the more central regions. As you can see, the Rockies uh, and some of those more desertous regions in between the Rockies and your more coastal mountainous regions here. Uh, the jet stream here at this point is doing something like this. So we have a bit of a trough in the east, elevating as you get further towards the east coast so there is some more mild area able to work its way up the east coast uh, it's a lot colder as you work your way more th towards the deeper south all the way up through the ohio valley and into the great lakes actually believe it or not it's these coastal regions that are a little bit more mild than the rest but still below normal for the most part uh, is what i would say so definitely not warm by any means um, they are dealing with this uh, warmer act or colder activity still just not quite as cold as the more inland regions as we work our way towards uh, already into tomorrow afternoon here we can see a more major storm system moving on shore to the west we do have the showery activity persisting from that first storm system out to the east but we do see a 988 millibar low pressure center heading in towards central california this is bringing snowfall to a lot of these areas here in nevada uh, utah colorado wyoming um, that's from the first system, I believe. We see New Mexico, Arizona also seeing this snowfall depending on your elevation. And then obviously the lower elevation and more coastal areas at this point seeing primarily rainfall here is, is what we're seeing. Now, I want to keep going with this, but we can already see that by Tuesday, this trough in the east is alleviating a little bit. We see that there's a lot of pushback occurring uh, with some warmer, more moist air from the Gulf, pretty much all the way from the East Coast and especially in through the plains here. It's a little bit uh, more advancing at this point. Uh, we see that pushing up uh, really towards the north. And we see this continue on for the week until we reach Thursday where this kind of reaches its peak. And we see a low up to the north here, 999, uh, extending a cold front back like this because this warm air is really saying, no, stay away, you know, we're stronger than you, and, and it is. The, the warm is pretty much warmer than the cold at this point. Um, it is it is more powerful, it has more push, uh, and this cold air doesn't have much to work with, and it's really filling in primarily for the West. So when it's all out here, uh, there's not a lot left over to try to advance this cold front. So that's kind of what we're seeing at this point, is much more warm air here, a much stronger push to the north and there is a push to the south and likely this is a stationary front by this point uh, and we do see a lot of warm air advancing up the east coast here by thursday and even friday and basically what has to happen is another low develops over your more eastern central regions so we see this cold front extending down through arkansas mississippi louisiana texas and then a very strong warm front here for the mid-atlantic and the ohio valley so again we're gonna have another day where a lot of warmth is pushing up the coast likely very windy by the way as well since this is such unseasonably warm air uh there's likely a lot of wind pushing in from the south so anticipate that along the east coast uh, and what we see is this does start to advance some of that cold air it does outpace the cold still I can tell that the heart of it is still pretty much out west, and that is going to, again, withhold any major cold air for now from entering into the eastern United States. We do see a pretty strong low up here for uh, the the Canada area, kind of near Toronto. We're going to see if this transfers over again. This is going to be a big deal if it does, uh, but we do see some low developing there. Uh, and very quickly, this does transfer over 996 offshore of New England. Uh, cold air damming down here with some snowy conditions. Let's just keep going. And that does kind of alleviate pretty quickly, but again, a, a pretty major snowstorm there. Uh, we do get this quick moving storm through a lot of the Ohio Valley, the east in general, I would say, right here. And the jet stream is still kind of in this elevation phase towards the east, and um, it's a lot colder out west at this point. But there is no major troughs or ridges. It's just kind of like a slant up eastward. Uh, we can see that as we continue this on, um, we see a lot quieter of conditions. The jet stream by the end of this model run doing something like this, maybe descending more towards the east now. So some of this cold air able to work its way into the mid-Atlantic and northeast. 
Uh, we'll have to watch and see for that. But this is very late in the model run. So we have seen this flip-flop a little bit, so keep that in mind. As we take a look at the total precipitation, it's pretty clear that for a majority of this model run, we're going to be in a jet stream pattern, something like this, because you can basically see where the storms follow that jet stream, just like this. Uh, some activity picking up here in the more south-central United States, deeper south, but that's kind of uh, an exception here because we see most of this activity moving on shore to the west and then ascending as it heads up the east. So further north, further north, further north uh, until it reaches the northeast. Now, the total snowfall is showing us basically the same thing, that there will be more cold available in the west. And here in the east, we're going to have a lot more um, of pretty much less cold air to work with. And there will be snowfall, it appears, for the Great Lakes being possible. And then also the northeast with that low that's around here and then transfers offshore. Uh, that is going to depend on a lot with that transition over eastward. We're going to have to watch and see with that one because there is a lot that can change, a lot that can happen. We are going to be tracking it, though, with you guys daily, so always be sure to subscribe. Uh, we'll take a look here at this American model as well. I want to see the differences here, and primarily I want to see what happens near hours 240. Uh, we don't get too much difference. Let's see. So we still get a pure eastern snowstorm here instead of it having to transfer over we just get this storm to move in from the southeast just like this uh, and this brings a little bit more of a snowy solution here to a lot of the mid-atlantic and northeast so both these models still saying at least for the northeast that winter is not over and the gfs model here saying hey mid-atlantic you need to watch out too uh, although the northeast does get just absolutely uh crushed with the snowstorm so this would be a very major one to say the least and then we get more cold air on the way. And look at this, another very strong mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, and northeast snowstorm here on March 31st. So this would be very, very close to the beginning of April. Still dealing with these major winter storms, according to this American model. We want to take this with a grain of salt because it is rare. And also this GFS model is known for calling for rare things, and then it ends up not happening. So... Uh, we have to pay attention to the track record. I will say that at the end of the model run here, it's pretty clear we have a pretty major ridge going on here in the east with this ascending storminess through the central regions of the United States and through the east here. So this would be the look towards April 5th here, according to this model, um, which would bring very, very warm air for the beginning of April after all of that wintery activity is done. But again, we still have to take this with a grain of salt as well, even though this is a little bit more realistic. This is still something that we really need to pay attention to. Now, the total snowfall here, I just want to take a look at this, uh, would be very major across all of your kind of more central plains through the Ohio Valley into a bit of the kind of southern Appalachian Mountains, all the way up through areas in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York City, and then the northeast as well there in upstate New York and all of New England. Dealing with 10 inches plus in a lot of these areas that are in the pinks and especially the blues there and then the pinks within the blues are going to be even more snow. Definitely take it with a grain of salt though. I don't want us to consider this to be a likelihood. Uh, this is definitely just something we're watching for um, and we have to watch because the GFS model is right probably I would say two out of every 10 times. I don't know why I didn't just say it one out of every five times but something around there is how often this model is correct about things and that's just good enough to where we have to consider it because when it's different than the European model, it might be correct and the European might be wrong and we have to just look at it every single day. The European model is right probably at like three out of every five times. Um, it does have these misses here and there, but then it has uh, probably a little bit more than 50% of the time it's, it's spot on. Uh, so it is better, but we have to consider both. Now, speaking of the European model, we're going to take a look at this European ensemble model for the temperature anomalies. As you can see, cold in the east, it warms up pretty quickly by the time reaching Thursday, like I mentioned. So significantly warm air out here. And this cold air out west is digging down, kind of building its roots there. So it's going to be a little bit hard to move that cold air mass there. As you can see, the warm air sticking around all the way through Tuesday. This model calls for slightly below normal temperatures to persist after that point all the way till April 4th. But I really think that this model is just a little bit unsure because we still have this kind of solid core of cold out west. Um, and this would make it very hard for there to also be cold in the east. I'm just going to tell you guys that right now. Uh, the majority of the time when you see this cold air mass anchoring in to the west like this, you're going to see some warm air pushing back out east because uh, of this imbalance in the jet stream, right? So when the, we have this big of a dip here, 
this is going to make it much easier for the jet stream to do something like this a majority of the time. We're not seeing this here from this European Ensemble model, but tune in with this daily, please, because I really feel like it, over the coming days, we are going to see this model alleviate from this and show more warm in the east in the long range. Uh, I feel like we're right around that breakthrough here, but we'll have to wait and see, of course. Be sure to subscribe. Like I said, we do upload every single day. Also, hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Like the video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.